You're listening to Fish Grow Plants, a podcast all about practicing and sharing the love of aquaponics, hosted by Logan Schoolcraft. Hello, and welcome to Fish Grow Plants. In today's episode, we're talking all about one of, if not my favorite, greens, Swiss chard. I'll be honest, I really like Swiss chard, so I kind of felt bad that I did an episode on watercress before Swiss chard, but I figured I could work out some of the kinks in my process and then do better with Swiss chard. I'm sure I'm biased to this wonderful crop, but I have such fond memories with it. Did you know it was the first crop I got to work well for me in my aquaponic system years ago? I know it's listed as an easy crop to grow, but when you're starting out like I was, this was a big deal. Having seeds sprout, then grow, then put on leaves, and more leaves, and even more leaves if you keep cutting them. I ate a lot of Swiss chard and eggs for breakfast back then. I loved it. I still look back on those times fondly. The chickens love this stuff too. I'm not sure who ate more, me with the nice produce or the chickens with the scraps. I know I can tell you stories all day about how I feel about Swiss chard, but unless you have a similar experience as I did, you may never feel the same about it. That's okay. So let's dive into what Swiss chard is, specifically how it grows, and some other good information that just might, just might change your mind about this incredible plant. Common name, Swiss chard. Scientific name, Beta vulgaris, family, Aromanthaceae, life cycle, usually grown as an annual, but can be grown as a biennial that can tolerate cold temperatures. It usually stops producing when it flowers. Hardiness zones are 3 to 10. Hybrid status, open pollinated and hybrids. Days to maturity, about 25 to 30 days for baby and 50 to 60 for bunching. Common uses, cut and come again leafy greens, i.e. salads, soups, and stir-fry. Soil temperature for germination is usually 40 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the germination temperature, so these seeds are pretty spectacular. Seed depth, half an inch, be it in planter, soil, or your aquaponic system. Of note, if you don't plant them deep enough, they get into this weird unstable state as they emerge, so keep them down. Seed spacing, 2 to 4 inches apart to start with. Days to emergence, 7 to 14 days. Thin plants to 4 to 6 inches apart once up and growing. Row spacing, 18 to 24 inches if soil growing. Fertilizer needs, medium. Seeds per gram, the average is about 50 to 70 seeds per gram, but varies widely. Watering, keep routine and regular if not automated. No need to soak them, but don't let the plant dry out. Temperature. 86 degrees Fahrenheit, about 30 degrees Celsius, is optimal for Swiss chard, but this amazing plant can handle the extremes. A little frost is well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's air temperature, just to clarify. Lighting. Again, this plant can take partial to full sun, but figure out the variety you have and match it to your local conditions. pH. Soil pH should be over 6.0 and under 7-ish, and hopefully your aquaponic system water is around 7.0 as well. Transplanting. Start your seeds approximately 5 to 6 weeks before your anticipated transplant date. Common insects. Aphids, leaf hoppers, leaf miners, ligus bug, aka tarnished plant bug, and slugs. Insect control. Keep your attention on them to be as proactive as possible, but if they do happen, spraying and handpicking them off, predatory insects, and drowning traps of beer, for the slugs, work. Remember to be careful about any pesticide use near your aquaponic system. What may be safe for the plant may not be safe for your fish. Diseases. Basil rot, circospora, leaf blight, curly top, damping off, downy mildew. Disease present Prevention and treatment. Keep your work area and tools clean. Rotate crops regularly. Maintain good airflow around plants. And if you do get a disease, remove the infected plants and destroy them. It's always a good idea to keep an eye out on your plants and remove any part or whole plant that looks like it's having a problem. Harvest. Take leaves from the outside of the plant, using care not to damage the inner leaves and stalks for a cut and come again harvest method or simply cut the plant off at the base to harvest the entire thing. 
A plunge into cold water will be good to remove dirt, debris, bugs, and maintain crispness. Storage. These greens are very perishable, so if you don't eat them right away, make sure your entire harvest and processing cycle keep the plant cold so when you put it in the refrigerator, you're getting the longest storage you can out of it. Taste and flavor description. Crisp, tender, and bitter, and I'd add slightly saline, which might be my version of bitter, are all descriptor, descriptors of Swiss chard's flavor although the bitterness seems to be debatable. When cooked, it tends to lose any bitterness it has and tastes more like spinach. The stems can be used as a substitute for celery and cooked similarly. Nutrition. Swiss chard is considered a superfood and is high in vitamins A, K, C, as well as a laundry list of other vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. I guess I should eat as much of this crop as I can. Cooking. I like to eat this stuff raw, use it as a wrap, or in a salad. Honestly, I probably eat most of it right off the plant. I like it as fresh as I can get it. But there's also many ways to cut it up and cook these greens into tasty dishes. If you can't find anything on your own, check out the link on the Fish Grow Plants blog to Simply Recipes for plenty of ideas to get you going. And don't forget to share. Nothing like cooking up a wonderful dish of superfood to enjoy with friends and family. Well, this has been great for me. I feel more informed about Swiss chard just by doing this episode. Now I can start to make tweaks to raising it in my little aquaponic niche of the world to get all the benefits nutritionally in addition to the satisfaction of producing an amazing crop. So if you're itching to get your hands on some Swiss chard seeds and get going, then I'd recommend you check out some seed suppliers. Here are 10 companies I referenced while creating this episode. Johnny Selected Seeds, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, Territorial Seed Company, Strictly Medicinal Seeds, Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, Seed Savers Exchange, Albert Leah Seed Company, High Mowing Organic Seeds, Seedway, and Burpee. So good luck and happy aquaponic growing with Swiss chard. Questions? Let me have them. Do you need clarification, more information, or maybe you just have a tangent thought? Send all your thoughts my way. See the website fishgrowplants.com for episode details, or just fire off an email to fishgrowplants at loganschoolcraft.com, and I'll get back to you. So, was this episode good, bad, ugly, or other? Let me know. Comment, email, smoke signals, it doesn't matter. I'd love to hear from you. Your feedback is immense, and I'm always grateful for it. Likewise, thank you for taking the time to listen and share your thoughts. Have a wonderful day. This has been another episode of Fish Grow Plants, the podcast all about practicing and sharing the love of aquaponics, hosted by Logan Schoolcraft. 